Hi and welcome to my talk. I'd like to start with a big thank you and hats off to the organizers of this truly extraordinary symposium that I hope sets a precedent on how we interactively communicate about our research. So this research here is joint work with Jochen Blatt and Noemi Kort from TU Berlin and Adrián González Casanova from UNAM in Mexico City. I will speak about a population with a dormant form. So you may think of plants with seeds, um, but actually a lot of microorganisms have this kind of dormant form too. And um, what is the advantage of having that? Well, in the seed form, the genetic material can by far outlive the plant and therefore survive even in places like the Atacama Desert that you see here, just sort of waiting for the environment to become nicer. So we developed a bright fisher type model for a population where you can, where individuals can transition in and out of the dormant state either independently or like the flowers in the desert after the rain simultaneously. And I will explain both mechanisms and then study their impact on the property of coming down from infinity. So what is the setup here? We have a haploid population, which means each individual has exactly one parent. And we have disjoint generations of M active and M dormant individuals. And we have an exchange of C individuals um, per generation between these two groups. How do we get generation one from generation zero? Well, we have each child choose their parent in the previous generation independently. In the new plant generation, most of the individuals, so N minus C many, will choose their parent from the plants, whereas C many will choose their parent from the seeds um, in the previous generation. For the seeds, of course, the roles are inversed, so most of the seeds will choose a seed parent, whereas C many will choose a plant parent. And so you get a transition like this, where the most important rule that you have to see is that plant parents are chosen with replacement, so they might have zero or several offspring, while seed parents are chosen without replacement. So there's always exactly one copy of the seed in the next generation. All right, this mechanism, of course, we can now iterate both forward and backward in time. We get this kind of um, bi-infinite random graph on which we want to define two processes that describe the evolution of our population, one forward and one backward in time. So forwards in time, we add types to our model. In this case, purple and white, and we trace the fraction of purple individuals in our population. We assign purple and white at random in generation zero and then just propagate the types forward in time by saying that the offspring inherits the type of the parent. And then you see here X, N and Y, M are just the frequency of purple individuals in the active, respectively, the dormant generation uh, population. Okay, now if we scale um, the size of the seed bank with the size of the active population and we use that same scaling for time, we get a limit which is the seed bank diffusion given here. So note that in this diffusion the only source of randomness is in the active population and it's precisely given by this term that you will probably recognize as a wright fisher diffusion term or genetic drift. Whereas um, the probabilistic drift of the diffusion up uh, front here is precisely describing the mechanism of transition in and out of the seed bank. Okay, we can play the same game backwards in time, where on the random graph that you saw before, we take a sample at generation zero and trace its ancestry or genealogy back in time until you meet the most recent common ancestor. Note that this tree has three types of transitions. You can go from active to dormant, the lineage can go from dormant to active, or two active lineages may coalesce. This also has a scaling limit at the same scale as the right fisher diffusion. And this limit is called the seed bank coalescent that you see on the picture here. Blue lineages are active lineages and yellow ones are dormant. You see there is a Kingman part, which is the pairwise merger at rate one per active pair among the active lineages. And there is also the transition from active to dormant or from dorm dormant to active, which happens at rate C per, well, number of active or dormant individuals. Now the seed bank coalescent is the moment dual to the seed bank diffusion you saw before. And before we extend this model to include simultaneous behavior, let me quickly say a word about timescales. 
because the effect of a seed bank depends on the relation between the length of the dormancy period and the coalescent time scale. So if these dormancy periods are shorter, then you get something like a weak seed bank in the sense that, for example, the genealogy is still given by a Kingman coalescent, albeit one time changed by a constant. This is the original model studied by Kashkron and Lascu and Vlad Gonzalez Casanova, Kurt and Spano. Now, if your dormancy periods are on the coalescent time scale, then you get a strong seed bank effect because, for example, the genealogy of your model will be given by the seed bank coalescent, which we will see in the, towards the end of the talk is significantly different from the Kingman coalescent. And of course, you can play the game and say, well, what if my dormancy periods are a lot longer than the coalescent time scale? You have to switch to the dormancy time scale to see anything in the limit. Um, and you get these kind of um, crazy objects like the ancient ancestral material coalescent, where everything coalesces instantaneously, essentially. All of these three, of course, have moment duals that describe the evolution of um, the purple frequency in the corresponding population. Okay, now that we know the time scales, um, let's return to our model and include simultaneous behavior. So we look at the model where most of the generations will behave like the quote-unquote normal seed bank. So follow the mechanism that we just described. But from time to time, we will see a big event. For example, where um, a positive fraction of the next generation plants comes from the seeds. Or, of course, the opposite event, where a positive fraction, Z bar, of the new generation of seeds comes from the plant parent generation. Now these events are big in their effect and therefore they have to be rare so we still see um, something in the coalescent limit and that's why we assume that they happen uh, with a probability of about n to the minus one per generation. And we also want to randomize the fraction of individuals that will be moved so z and z bar are actually random variables. With that model you still get scaling limits just as before. Now our frequency of purple individuals in the active respectively dormant population converges to the solution of this integral equation. And you recognize the component that belong to the bright fissure diffusion, so the genetic drift, and you recognize the terms that belong to the individual migration between the active and the dormant population. But now in addition, you have jumps in the migration where the size and time of these jumps are governed by Poisson point processes NF and ND. Now backwards in time we get a very similar picture. So we also have a scaling limit with the same scaling of N. <coughs> Excuse me. And we get this object that again has the same kind of transitions we saw before. So we have the pairwise mergers of active lineages, individual transition into and out of dormancy. But in addition we have these big events. <coughs> we have these big events where several individuals simultaneously decide to move into or out of the seed bank. And of course, this guy and the previous um, jumping diffusion are moment duals of each other's too. Okay, now that we have the objects, let's look at their properties, more specifically at the property of coming down from infinity. The Kingman coalescent, which is the one with no seed bank at all, is known to come down from infinity which means that if you start that coalescent with an infinite amount of individuals, at any positive time t, you will be finite almost surely. Now the seed bank coalescent, here's where it differs, does not come down from infinity. Um, this is precisely the storage effect of the seed bank, because whether you start with infinitely many um, active or dormant individuals, you will always have an infinite number of individuals in the seed bank. So let's have a closer look at this, you see here the plant population and the seed population, you see kingmen rapidly diminishing the numbers of plants, and you have the migration between the two populations. And you can show that if you start with infinitely many seeds, the individual migration is too weak to empty um, the seed bank. However, if you start with infinitely many plants, of course, kingmen will bring that down to a finite number immediately. But the individual migration mechanism is quick enough to save infinitely many into the seed bank before Kingman has um, reduced all their numbers. Okay, so that's what happened with only the individual mechanism. And what happens if we add simultaneous migration? So the first observation actually remains true, because if you think about it, if we start with infinitely many seeds, since the simultaneous migration only moves 
positive fractions, unless that fraction is one, there will always be infinitely many left in the seed bank. So the, the picture gets more interesting when we start with infinitely many plants. Now, of course, we know that if we have the individual mechanism there, that one will save infinitely many, so let's remove that option. And now it's really down to a competition between Kingman and the simultaneous migration um, mechanism that we characterize by a measure or distribution lambda. And it's all about speed. So the condition that you see here is essentially telling you if lambda puts enough weight on the numbers close to zero, which makes it act faster, then it will be fast enough to save an infinite amount of individuals into the seed bank before Kingman has diminished the numbers to, or has brought the numbers down to something finite. However, if it is too slow, well then Kingman brings us down from infinity. Okay, and then you have the last uh, curious case of um, that you might have uh, the uh, migration with, with an atom in one. And so that one would, of course, uh, just empty the whole seed bank after a random time. And then if Kingman is faster than whatever migration mechanism you still have, then that will bring you down from infinity after um, a random time. Okay, so that was it from me about seed banks. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I really look forward to seeing you at the discussion session.